Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Eddie Machi, pharmacist and chairperson of the nonprofit organization Afri Medical. Machi has introduced a more than 300 year old Japanese system of selling medicine into Africa. She uses that system to deliver much needed drugs to the deepest reaches of the continent where access to health care is limited. We asked Machi about what led her to start up her current efforts in Africa. I realize that people born on this earth can have very different lifespans, simply depending on where you are born. I want to do whatever I can to help the people in those less advantaged regions live longer and longer. What I bring to the table as a pharmacist is medicine, so I'd like to make the world a better, brighter place through those medicines. More than 300 years ago, a new method of selling medicines developed in Edo period Japan. Vendors from Toyama Prefecture would visit households across the country, leaving a box full of different medicines at each. Those households would then use the medicines as needed. Several months later, the vendor would return, collect a fee for whatever medicines the family had used, and restock the medicine box. This method is known as Oki Gusuri. Tanzania, Africa. Eddie Machi started implementing this traditional Japanese system of selling medicine here since 2015. She set up Oki Gusuri medicine boxes in a few remote villages far removed from urban areas. The idea was to give the villagers immediate access to medicine in case of sickness or injury. I've set up medicine boxes in three villages that don't have access to health care. There's about 100 households in all. These villagers have to walk for hours to get to the nearest hospital. Some die along the way. And even if they get there, there's often a five to six hour wait. Some die waiting. In so many cases, problems are left untreated until they become severe. By setting up okigusuri, you remove the weight, and you have it at your fingertips. You don't have to go to the hospital. The important thing is to give them the tools to self-medicate, take care of their own health. These are the okigusuri that we distribute. All of these are items we procure locally. These are cough medicines. These are bandages. These are ointments. This is to get rid of parasites. These are painkillers. These households now have immediate access to about 10 types of medicine at any time. Machi says the boxes have had an impact. She hopes to save the lives of those who should be saved given advancements in medicine. The inspiration for this mission struck on a trip to India while she was studying pharmaceutical science in university. She was volunteering at a home for orphaned children founded by Mother Teresa. At the home, I would look after these children who had no parents. I helped feed them, do their laundry, things like that. At that point, I had nothing to my name, but I could still make a difference in their lives. I felt fulfilled. It was an emotionally stirring experience. I kept doing volunteer work even after I graduated, but it was mostly these one-offs on my time off. Eventually, I started to wonder whether what I was doing was really having an effect on people's lives. Wanting to do long-term volunteer work, I joined the Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteers System. At 27, Machi quit her pharmaceutical job and applied to a government-run program for dispatching volunteers overseas. 
she was dispatched to Niger in West Africa. If I was going to do this, I wanted to go in deep, so I chose the Republic of the Niger. My parents were completely against the idea of me going to Africa. My mother was worried about my physical safety, me being a woman, and all the potential dangers I could face. My father told me that there was no future in volunteering, career-wise. But in the end, I made it clear that they weren't going to change my mind. They said I could go if I promised to come back safely. I went to Niger for two years, from 2006 to 2008. It's right in the middle of the Sahara Desert. During sandstorm season, you can't see five meters in front of you. The climate is incredibly hot, well over 40 degrees Celsius. One time I collapsed from malnutrition. I was drifting in and out of consciousness, and I thought to myself, this is bad. I think I might die. Under the extreme conditions of Niger, Machi focused her efforts on preventing the spread of malaria by spreading knowledge about the disease. Among the infectious diseases in Niger, malaria was especially deadly. It was a major problem. We chose six villages and conducted a survey. We would ask the villagers, what is the cause of malaria? They would reply, God. Only about 20% of them got it right. Malaria is spread by mosquitoes, so I focused on enlightening them. The literacy rate in Niger is about 20 percent, so there's no point in distributing informational pamphlets or putting up posters. So what we did was enlighten through storytelling, using illustrations or the radio. After two years, 90 percent of the villagers were answering correctly that malaria was spread by mosquitoes. But the percentage of people who were sleeping under mosquito nets hadn't changed at all. Even if you wanted to buy one, people didn't have the money or didn't know where to get one. So looking back, I do have regrets. I felt that I did all I could at the time. I didn't have the capacity to think about what I could do to improve the situation. Machi was at a loss as to what she could do to contribute. Then one day, she met a woman in a village with a young child who was sick. The experience opened her eyes to the severity of the reality in Africa. I was making my rounds when this mother came up to me and asked for money. It turns out her child had a very high fever and she needed money to hire a donkey trolley to take the child to a hospital. I didn't give her money, because if you give one villager money, you have to give everyone money. I was being asked for money on a daily basis. It's a refrain, really. Give me money, give me money. It's a chant. About a month later, I went back to that village and asked that mother about what happened to her child's fever. She told me they had been unable to go to the hospital and the child died. Part of it is that in one way my own actions, or inaction indirectly, ended up taking this child's life. At the same time, even if I had given the mother the money, would the child's life have been saved? Everything was fuzzy. In the end, giving one person money is not going to solve the root of the problem. I resolved to change the society, create a framework for all of the children to live happier, healthier lives. Machi wondered what she could do to change the social framework. After returning to Japan, she enrolled in business school in 2011 to learn how. 
She would later start up an NPO along with friends she had made at the school. In 2015, they started introducing okigusuri to villages in Tanzania. I used to be a pharmacist after all, so I'd always wanted to do something using medicine. We thought that the okigusuri system could work, and things started from there. I researched how the tradition of okigusuri developed in the first place. Large families, lack of infrastructure, lack of medical insurance system. They say that these are the three reasons the okigusuri system developed. These three characteristics also apply to Africa right now. Okigusuri is the right fit. I wanted to do it in Niger, but the Japanese government has currently withdrawn all volunteers from the country due to an unstable political situation. We managed to get some connections to people in Tanzania, and so we started from there. Civil order and peace is a must for what we do. Machi's NPO currently has a staff of 45. In Tanzania, Pharmacists and nurses visit participating households twice a month. They restock medicine and collect payment for whatever medicines the family has used. The villagers can address problems quickly. Some have told me that when there is an outbreak of malaria, it was very helpful to be able to get a checkup and take the necessary medicine. The villagers tell me that they feel at ease knowing that the medicine is there, so that is one of the positive side effects of the okigusuri system itself. Mobile phones have really begun to spread in Africa as well, so payment can be done easily over the phone. Because our staff make the rounds, villagers know their faces, and so they are actually at risk of being robbed. But by collecting payment over these mobile devices, the collector doesn't have to carry money with them. You can mitigate risk. Three years into their Tanzania okigusuri business, Machi has her sights set on spreading this system throughout all of Africa. What obstacles lie ahead? We're still unable to bring in medicine from Japan. So we've started choosing medicines we need and working with pharmaceutical companies to start the application process for the necessary permits. Locally speaking, the mortality rate for children under five remains very high. It's a big problem. The villages we work in have brown water. They basically drink mud water. So it's no surprise that the water gives them problems. They get diarrhea. Not to mention they drink the medicines using that same water. There are companies that have the technology to filter water and make it clean. So I'd like to collaborate with companies like that. There's only so much we can do alone. So when it comes to the water problem, I'd like to work together with people who specialize in that field. Provide first, receive compensation later. Get them to use the products and payment naturally will follow. Basically, this is the business model for okigusuri. And I feel like it applies to my experiences as well. I went to Africa wanting to do something for the people. In the end, I received so much more out of it myself. When the local people tell me that they were glad we left a certain medicine, or that simply having the medicines there gives them peace of mind, that gives me energy. It gives me the power and motivation to do what I want to do next.